Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy and righteous name. Pastor Evangelist Arthur Weathersby. And I'm Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. That's just the truth. Anyhow, with the Weathersby's of Sound the Alarm Ministries yes. here on Heart Ministry Network TV, we welcome you back for another week, the third week in February. Oh, Amen. my God. We, we operating out of a series, and, and we thank God for all of you uh, Heart Ministry Network Amen. TV loyal thank listeners you. and Amen. viewers um, that have been following the, the network and also the ministry of Sound the Alarm. We cannot thank you enough. All Amen. right, we're about ready to get into what God has us here for. Amen. Father God, we just want to thank and praise and worship you, God, for this ministry that we're on, Heavenly Father God. We thank you for the CEOs, oh God, Pastor Ken and Brenda Divers, in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, God, hallelujah, for continuing to bless and strengthen them and keep them, God, providing every need. God, we just glorify you right now, God, for just having another chance, Heavenly Father God, in this day to glorify and praise your holy name. Thank you for your forgiveness, oh God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, glory to God. God, as we move forward, oh God, and forgiving others, oh God, and going on to be what you will have us to be in you, Father. Thank you for your word you're going to send forth, God, with all power and anointing, Heavenly Father. Send your glory, oh God. Hallelujah. Let your power fall upon our hearts and minds and our ears, oh God, that we may be able to hear what you're saying to us, oh God, and be a doer of that word. Let our eyes, minds, eyes be illuminated and enlightened, oh God, to the hope that's within you, God, that we have through Jesus Christ and the word of God. Father, now let the words of our mouth, meditation, and our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray and our soul say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're coming out of the Amplified Bible. And we're going to read 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Then we are going to Colossians 3rd chapter, 1st through the 8th verses. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 reads, Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah... He is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has, has passed away. And behold, the fresh and new has come. Amen. Now we're going to Colossians 3, 1 through 8. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. Amen. And seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher things, not on things that are on the earth. For as far as the world is concerned, you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you, you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. So kill, dead and deprived of power, the evil desires lurking in your members, those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, unholy desires, and all greed and covetousness, for that is idolatry, the defying of self, and other created things instead of God. It is on account of these very sins that the holy anger of God is ever coming upon the sons of disobedience, those who are obstinately opposed to the divine will, among whom you also once walked, which when you were living in and addicted to such practices, the eighth verse in conclusion, but now, Put away and rid yourselves completely of all these things, anger, rage, bad feeling towards others, curses and slander, foul mouth, abuse and shameful utterances from your lips. Praise God. May God continue. Oh, hallelujah. To, um, bless his word where the word is already blessed. So we thank God for the blessed word of God out of 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Colossians 3, 1 and 8, that it may be sanctified in our hearts. Amen. Amen. As always, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We're continuing on with the series that we began at the beginning of this month. Now that you are saved, now what? what? Now that you're saved, now what? If you followed us from the beginning of the month, the first, uh, first uh, Wednesday in the month, uh -huh, mm -hmm. February, we were Romans 10, 9, 
where you got saved. Mm -hmm. yes. Now that you got saved, there's something that, that has to happen. And we've identified that. We were mm -hmm. in Romans 12, 1, yes. 2. And we were in a few other scriptures as well. But those were the found, that was some foundational scriptures that we had. Mm -hmm. Now here we are in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, continuing on with the thought. Because once you come into salvation, and once we lay down that, I mean salvation, yeah, and once we lay down that foundation, mm -hmm. our salvation is a process that's continual. Because when you go back to even to Romans 10, 9, when the mm -hmm. scripture says that when you, if you confess and acknowledge your lips, Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart, cling to and hear to and rely on the truth that God the Father raised him from the dead. This latter part is what I want you to hear. The Bible says you will be saved. Yes. You will be saved. So why am I emphasizing that? Aren't I saved once I accepted Jesus Christ in, as, as my personal Savior? Ah, let me tell you, that man sounds good. That sounds like you want me to say yes, mm -hmm. but I can't say yes to that. Mm -hmm. I have to say what thus saith the scripture. Amen. And what you Amen. and I have to understand, I got to take you back to my scripture, y'all, my mm -hmm. verses. I'm loving this. Isaiah 55, 8. Mm -hmm. For my thoughts mm -hmm. are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Yes. That's God speaking to us about how he thinks and the way we act. They don't match up. And so what are you saying? You think that you would be saved. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you will be saved. Why? It's a day-to-day -day process. Day by day. That's when we get past second. Well, this is how it begins. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Mm -hmm. This is what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading from the Amplified Translate, Amplified Study Bible, mm -hmm. Zondervan edition. It may sound a little bit different than the one my wife has. She has an Amplified Bible as well. Mm -hmm. This is what it reads. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior. That's how you get saved. Mm -hmm. That's how you get saved. Yeah. First off, it says it is in Christ. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's in him that we live, yeah, move, and have, and have our, our very being. being. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the scripture says he's the author and the finisher of our, our faith. faith. We have no faith outside of Christ, Amen. so it has to be in him. It can't Amen. be out of him. No. If it's out of him, guess what? You ain't saved. Oh, That's my God. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that is grafted in. Oh, I love that word grafted yes. in because I like it when the Amplified Bible uses that word grafted because uh -huh. I like to use this particular illustration. Uh, just in, you, you know, you've heard people in, in, that have had been in uh, horrendous fire uh, accidents and things of that nature where it was fire um, that was involved. And they might have had some personal bodily injuries um, that, that they were burned real bad. Mm -hmm. and, and, there, and there was a necessity for a skin grafting to repair uh, that damaged area. Well, that's something that's done on the outward um, with the skin. But the Bible lets us know mm -hmm. that because we have been, oh my, oh my God, we have been burned, oh my God, we have been burned, mm -hmm. uh, irre irreprehensibly burned mm -hmm. by sin. Mm -hmm. Sin has wore us out. Yeah. And, 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 and God no longer can use us in the way that we was. So what does he have to do? He has to, he has to perform a, a cosmetic, a, oh my God, somewhat of a cosmetic surgery on us. Yes. But it's not cosmetically done from the outside. Yes. It's done from within. So that's why we yes. have to be engrafted yes. in Christ. That's right. uh -huh. Because the outward, the outward part of us cannot be saved. The yes, flesh right. can't be saved. That's right. So God says from within. From within. So he, he deals with our and he deals with our heart. That's right. He deals that's that's why the circumcision of the heart. That's, that's why it's engrafted. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then he goes on to say with that particular verse, it's engrafted in joined to him by faith in him as Savior. Don't you know that mm -hmm. we are God is a partner with us? Yes. We have a joint partnership with yes. the Lord. Co-labors together. Ain't that a with good them. thing to yes, know? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my yes, God. God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jesus and me. That's the yes, name of right. my company, our company. Mm -hmm. Jesus and me. Why, why are you just saying me? Because salvation is personal. That's personal. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, see, I got you. Oh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah uh-huh. He got it in Christ. Yeah, yeah, he is a new creature. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. Guess mm -hmm. what? You nor I can go uh, and, and talk about our relationship with God and declare mm -hmm. that we are new in mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. unless the Holy Ghost does it. That's right. The Holy Ghost is the one. He's the one. He's the transforming agent. That's right. He's the transforming agent of God. Yes, he if is. he ain't operating in your life, you ain't saved. Well, let's read what, what Roman, Romans 10. Romans 8, on that note that you had just, what you had just said. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're getting there. 
Romans 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you. But if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. He is not truly a child of God. What? You mean what I said was absolutely correct? It's the word of God. Well, absolutely it was correct. You know why it was correct? God is not a man. That's that right. That he should tell or act a lie. And, and matter of fact, the word of God says, Isaiah 55, 11, that was Numbers 23 and 19, guys, I partially uh, quoted Mm -hmm. now, uh, Isaiah 55, 11 says, so shall my word be to go forth out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. It shall prosper for the thing for which I sent it. It don't come back to me void. So if God says that if the Holy Ghost ain't in you, the word God says the Holy Ghost ain't in you, you ain't saved. That's exactly what he means. Uh-huh. So, 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 yeah. And, 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 yeah, his spirit. The old things, mm -hmm. the previous moral spiritual condition have passed away. What's the old things? That sinful nature of ours. Well, no, the sinful nature is still there. But the way that we acted, how That's we were right. living our lives, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we were living a life of sin mm -hmm. prior to salvation. Yes. That needs to die. Yes. And it needs to be, it needs to die daily. Daily. It's called I mortifying know. the deeds yes. of the flesh. Mortifying. And it says yes. daily. That's why I told you before, salvation is a process. That's right. And you have to go through some, and in that process, there should be some evidence of change called progressive change. Yes. Uh-huh. Should you automatically one day just stop sinning? No. no. But you know what? The Bible says, oh my God, watch this. Mm -hmm. You shall know them by the fruit that they bear. That's right. Ooh, we, I just hurt, I just helped somebody right and, there. And look at what Romans uh, 1 John 3 and 9 says. No one born begotten of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. For God's nature abides in him. His principle of life, the divine sperm, remains permanently within him, and he cannot practice sinning or commit it because he is born begotten of God. That's right. That's why, behold, New things have come mm -hmm. because spiritual awakening brings a new life. That's the end of, of, of verse 17, mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Mm -hmm. You know, God is good and he's Amen. good all the yes, time. He is. I think we need to pause right there pause, for the call. Call. Amen. This is Sound the Alarm Ministry. No, this is, that's just the truth. Anyhow, yeah. with the weather's music of Sound the Alarm Ministry on Heart Brain Ministry Network TV, we'll be right back after, after these moments. Hey there, praise the Lord. I am Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. Praise God, along with my husband, Pastor Arthur Lee Weathersby. Praise God, and we are Sound the Alarm Ministries. Amen, praise God, praise God. And we have a, a ministry on a, on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's just the truth anyhow. You all ought to join us, praise God. God is speaking. He's speaking. Hallelujah. Praise God, we've had our moments and we're back. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Hey, look at me. I'm old and I will have some moments. Yes, I will. Uh huh. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't. Oh my God, don't, don't hate. You'll get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to go to Colossians. Okay. Let's go to Colossians, the third chapter. And, and let's start at that first verse out there. If then you had been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek. The rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now, see, mm -hmm. but this is the thing about God. God says that if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. We've already been in Romans, all up in Romans. But in the eighth chapter of Romans, it tells you that you that, that you can't. I mean, sixth chapter, you cannot continue to live in sin. Uh, um, and then in the eighth chapter of Romans, in the first verse, it tells you that there's no condemnation for them that uh -huh. are in Christ Jesus who are, who are uh, led by or live, or walk, live by the spirit and not mm -hmm. by the flesh. Uh -huh. So God tells you all these things. But one thing I'm, I can assure you about God and, and, and who he is, he will give you detailed instructions on what you should be doing. So mm -hmm. now that you're saved, now what? Don't worry about the now what? Because a lot of times people sit around there waiting for, oh my God. Don't mm -hmm. you know like if you're at work? I mm -hmm. mean, I've, I've been in this kind of situation before. Mm -hmm. They brought us to a place and told us that we're getting ready to go in a new direction. And they got you all hyped up for what's to come. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, Arthur? Well, I was in the military service and we had this term that we used to say about that when I was in the army some 40 some odd years ago. We used to say, hurry up and wait. That's yeah. what they did. God don't do that. It says, therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, 
sharing his resurrection from the dead. That's being born again. Keep seeking the things that are above. Mm -hmm. So that's what God says. Because that's here right. before, you were not seeking the things that were above. You were seeking the, seeking the things that were below. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Not above, because above is where God is. That's and, right. And nothing but the righteous will see God. We weren't looking for no righteousness on this earth. That's right. We were looking to please our flesh and be gratified by that what we were looking for. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Why yes, is the author Lord. and the finisher of your faith? Now watch what it says. Mm -hmm, Set your mind mm -hmm. and keep focused on what I was waiting to get here. Yeah. Habitually <laughs> on the things above. Now understand this. God has already despised for us in his word that we had a habit of doing sin. Had a That's habit right. of doing That's sin. That's right. We, we habitually did sin. So God says this, and this is what I like about God. Mm -hmm. He will not ask you to do something that is not within That's your ability right. to do. That's right. First off, now I'm going to make it plain and simple for you. Watch, watch how it goes. You already know how to habitually do something. That's right. You habitually have done wrong. That's done right. Sin. That's right. Now God says habitually, habitually now, uh, uh, keep set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above. So how do you do that? Well, if you keep your mind stayed Stay on, on him. him you can't yes, be in perfect, perfect peace. peace. Oh Amen. <laughs> and we can't live our Christian life as though we're not. We either we we either say that we're not say. That's something that you and I have to know. That's something something that somebody can't tell us. This is a personal experience that each and every one of us need to have with Jesus Christ. Amen. So He says, "Set your mind, set your mind, and keep them set." on things above, the higher things, the spiritual things, those things that's going to take us from earth to glory. Amen. Not on the things of the world. Why? Now, he says over there in, um, in uh, 1 Corinthians 4 about set, dealing with eternal things, not the temple. Why? Because the temple things of life are few, far, and in between, and they will soon perish. Amen. We have to focus on him who is eternal. That's right. And you know what? And here's the thing that, that we want to say about this. It says set your mind. And, and, and we're talking about what the scripture says. Because here's the four. When you're operating out of your flesh, what you're doing is you're looking at those things that will gratify your flesh. Right. That you can go out and attain. God says, I need you to look at something, but I don't need you to look at it the way you look at things. That's right. Oh, my God. That's Watch right. that. What are you saying, Pastor? When we look at things and, and what we, uh, if our nature, it look, we looked at it from our, our natural mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. what we see. That's why the Bible tells us that there's the lust of the flesh and the lust, the lust of, the, of eyes. the eyes. Oh my God, yeah. But God says, I need you to look, but I need you to look That's a different right. way. It's a That's spiritual right. look. It's That's spiritual why it says, thing. set your mind. Set your mind. Your mind is what is where you, wherein lies your spiritual eyes. That's your soul, yes. That's yes. where your spiritual eyes ah, yes. are. That's so you right. have to set your mind and keep Focus habitually. Right, Why? Right. Because there's so many things going on in your mind that are designed to keep you out of focus. They are distractions. Right. And the enemy, he really seeks um, to cast us down. He cast us off the excellency of the knowledge of God that we have. That's why we got to constantly keep casting down what vain ima imaginations and every high thing that would strive to exalt itself above the knowledge of God that we receive from him daily through the word of God. Amen. We got to keep God did. Yes, he did it all by himself. He did everything that we needed him to do. But that does not negate once again our accountability and responsibility to do God's word. He made it plain for us. He opened up the way. What more can he do? He didn't make it hard. Hard. It's hard when we don't want to do it. It's hard when we operate in rebellion. It's hard when we want to be stubborn. Praise God, disobedient. That's when it's hard. Praise God. But we have work to do. We've got to work out our salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. We got work to do, y'all. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and again, the major aspect of what we're uh, focusing on is, is something that, um, you know what, it, I don't think I don't think people really understand that there's what we're really dealing with. The, the Bible tells us that the, the weapons of warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. We're in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not something that you visibly see. Mm -mm. It's mental. It's mental. That's right. So the warfare operates within our 
mind. Yes. Now, this is why I yes, love this, this particular scripture in Psalm 23, because mm -hmm. this kind of helps us. Mm -hmm. Psalm 23, verse 2 says, mm -hmm. I'm going, I got to go to verse 2, but I want to get to 2B. Two, two mm -hmm. He lets me lie. He lets me lie down in green pastures. That's mm -hmm. good right there. But well, this is what I want right here. He leads me besides the still and quiet waters. Yes. And what's that? What's that still and quiet waters represent? That's, That's your it. mind. Yes. Because why is it has to be still and quiet waters? Because our minds outside of relationship with God and him leading us to beside the still and quiet waters is always in a state of upheaval. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, anybody, and if you want to be honest about it, you, you'll say amen, amen. Because our minds are always, oh my God, mm -hmm. so much stuff be going on in our minds. Y'all about ready to make me lose my mind up, up in here, here up, up in here. here. That's just the truth anyhow. Amen. Oh my God. So God has to get us to a place where our minds can be at peace. Yes. It can be at rest. We can be calm. Why? So that we can keep our set our minds and keep focused habitually on the things above. Heavenly things. Not on things. Yes, yeah, so God has to identify that. That's right. Because you can say, my mind is focused on things above. No, you got to go beyond where your mind is, all right? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, on the things that are on, not on the things, yeah, he's going to help you again. Not on the things on the earth, which have only temporary value. My wife That's just spoke right. about and, that. And that was 2 Corinthians 4, 18. I didn't want to go without giving that scripture. Praise God. Mm -hmm. That shit already told you. You can't focus on temporary things. Why? Because they're temporary. We're talking about eternal. eternal. The Bible yes. says, for God so loved the world, he gave yes. his only begotten son, whosoever would believe upon him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. Focus on eternal everlasting life. Yes. Temporary things are here today and gone tomorrow. See, one thing about everlasting life, we, we, that's, our, that's our future. We're going somewhere. Many people think their future is now or uh, uh, just right here on the earth where I'm going to next or whatever, but we need to be living our life from that, from that place of salvation, from that place of relationship with God, because we know we have a future. Praise God. He said, I, I, he knows where he's taking us to. He already went and prepared a place for us. He's, that's why he said, don't let your heart be troubled. I am already prepared a place for you. We need to be living for heaven while we living on the earth as well. This is a great teaching right here, people. I want you to understand this. Um, our pastor, Bishop David G. Evans of Bethany Baptist Church in Linden Wall, New Jersey, has been instructing us uh, as believers in Christ that we need to understand that we should be operating according to what God's word says for us. Too many of us are limiting God, limiting God and his word by our our limited uh, of views and, and understandings and, and the way that we go about doing things. Like my wife said, we got a tendency just to think about what's going to happen next week. Oh, yeah, we got a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. I got a five-year plan of what I'm going to be doing here and there. I got a goal set for me that I'm going to do this and do that. That's all well and good. Mm -hmm. But your yes, focus ought to be beyond that. Beyond that. That's right. Because I tell you what, oh, my God, watch mm -hmm. this. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's setting your minds on the heavenly things. Yes. And guess what? All of these other things will be added unto That's right. you. Don't even That's, have to so, add. So, so there we added. go. It'll just be added to mm -hmm. you. Just give it to you for no reason. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Ooh, ooh, wee, ooh. 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 That's him. good right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you died to this world. Mm -hmm. And your new real life is hidden with Christ and God. Oh, my God. That's a, that, would, that, that third verse would teach right there. Anybody yeah. trying to find your life? Matter of fact, we need to stop looking for that old life. Amen. God is that it's we're hid. It's dead. It's in the sea of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west, God said, I am forgiving you. Now we got to learn to forgive ourselves. Go beyond, praise God, because your life is hidden. Anybody try to go deep sea fishing on your life? They trespassing. <laughs> watch what, this was what Jesus, remember what Jesus Christ said to some people when he told them to follow him mm -hmm. and, and, they, and they had all kinds of excuses and one person said, well, I got to go bury my brother that's dead. He, Jesus Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. My that's Lord. yeah. That's why. Oh my God. That's why when you die to this, you you die to this world. So therefore, mm -hmm. you don't need to be concerned about things that are dead. You need to be focused on things that are alive. Yes, and yes. and the Bible says that is in Him we live, move, move and have and our, our very being. being. Oh my God. New life. And, and don't you know? Yeah, we are. And it's a new your new real life. Your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. It's hidden with Christ in God. Cause you know what? Sometimes people just don't know. They don't know your, they, they don't know your, oh yeah, watch this. They may know your, they may know your glory, but they don't know your story. 
Uh huh. Many people say I, I did a message on this not not too long ago. Many people have a tendency to say I know that person. I know this person. Mm -hmm. The best that you do is know of them. I'm saying not everybody, but there's quite a few. A, a, a vast majority of people really don't know people that say they know. Why mm -hmm. is that? The scriptures define yeah. it for us. Yeah. Man looks on the outward appearance. God, God looks, looks in the heart. the heart. To know somebody, you have to do more than surface uh, 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 understanding right. of that That's person. Right. You got to go deep within. That's why my new life is hidden in Christ. Because why? I, 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 oh my God! Right. In Christ, with in, in, God? in God? Why? Mm -hmm. Because I'm engrafted in, in Christ. Grafting That's in where Christ. my new life is. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Brand new mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. That's right. He's my life. Future. He's yeah. the future. Yeah. Because when He comes back, He's coming back in all His glory. That's right. Now, 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 the Scripture tells us we don't know what we're going to look like when he comes back. Mm -hmm. But when he comes back, oh my God, this, this, more, this mortal body, this here, oh my God, the, oh, this mortal, this mortal flesh, this here, yes. uh, uh, this, this body, yes. this body will take on immortality yes. and it yes. will be yes. glorified Hallelujah. as he is already glorified. Right, and guess what? Thank I don't know what I'm going to look like, but I'm going to look, look like him. him. Oh my God, I'm going to look like him. I'm going to be looking like my yes. daddy. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good thing to that's look like him. Daddy, when you yes. have resemblance of your daddy, yes. you know you belong. You oh belong. my God! Uh, now that you say, now what? I tell you what, we're gonna have to park it right there. We yes. got real excited right here, right there. But we'll be back. Yes, That's God. all right. We'll be back next week. Don't hold Thank on. Don't worry. Lord. We'll be back. I'm Pastor Vanjie Arthur. That's Sherry Weathersby. This is That's the Truth. Anyhow, with the Weathersby's of Sound Alarm Ministries on Heart Amen. Ministry Network TV, when it is being and has been done from the heart, you we know that it is been being and has done. been done right. right. And guess what? We, we do the thing. thing. In, In the, the Lord. Lord. God, God bless, bless you. Bye-bye.